Alright, well, here's a knife that I've wanted to make a video on for quite a while, and uh, figured I'd get around to doing it now, since, uh, you know, since I have some time, I only gotta go into work tomorrow, it's only like, oh gee, I don't know, 10, 10 o'clock, I gotta wake up at 5.30, so I mean, I got time, screw sleep, sleep is for the week! That fidget spinner's not for the week, I'm gonna, I'm gonna annoy you with that, okay, we're gonna stop that. Hi, Mr. Man here. Today, we have a video on the cruddy light setup. Because I got I got some new lights, but okay. Woo! Isn't that awesome? It's it's pitch black down here actually. So I'm filming this at night. <laughs> kind of gives you a little cozy feeling, little little bit of a cozy feeling. Anyway, this is the Phantom Steelworks Skinwalker. Now I'm not gonna go through my normal talking points that I did in the last couple of videos because uh, well since it's a custom knife, I feel like that eh, there's really no reason to go through go through all the talking points and all that fun stuff. Because I mean you know it's custom. Man, that light's really not gonna do it justice, is it? Anyway, Phantom still works Skinwalker. Um, story behind this knife, okay? We gotta tell story time. We gotta tell a story, okay? Because that's how Mr. Man works. So, I'd seen one of the... Well, actually not this knife, but I've seen the... Fix the camera. Uh, the PF1 Flipper by Chris Markin. Markin? Markin? Dear Lord, Charles Markin. Uh, Charles Martel. Um, Chris Martin from Phantom Steelworks. And I'd wanted one, so I... Well, actually, no. I'd seen that on Jim Skelton's channel. Sorry. Let me get the story straight. <laughs> seen the PF1 Flipper on uh, Jim Skelton's channel. I was like, that's cool design. Went over, you know, did a little research on Phantom Steelworks and found out, hey, they make this guy. It's a skinwalker. Which I thought looked really, really cool. And I uh, contacted Chris Martin. And I was like, hey, you know, make skinwalkers still? And he was like, no, I don't actually make the skinwalkers. But uh, he, he's making another model knife. I can't remember which one it was. Send me some pictures. Really nice looking knife. I mean, his work is mm, awesome. There goes an email. He, his work is really, really good. Um, but I wasn't too interested in the other knife. I like the look of this one better. So I was like, okay, you know, thanks. But no thanks right now. I think I'll hold off. I was really polite. I told him to fuck off. i um, kidding. So I kept an eye out for one of these. I was perusing around eBay like I normally do. Trying to waste my hard-earned cash. And I ran across one of these guys. Um, kind of combination I wanted. I wanted a murdered out finish here. All all murdered out and ground and texture. That's what he calls it. Being murdered out. Flame anodizing on it was pretty nice. I like that. So I uh, I think it was a buy it now. I bought it from the guy. you know, And he was really nice because he actually sent me a message. Um, and he was like, hey, you know... or. In his listing, I think he said that he was having some money troubles and he was just trying to sell some stuff, you know, get off his hands. And, you know, he told me to take good care of it. And I was like, yeah, I will, man. You know, I will. So I have. I haven't really carried this around much. But uh, it is a cool knife. This is probably one of the coolest pieces I own. And that white light is going to drive us nuts. It's supposed to make the video nicer, but it's not because I don't have light coming from behind. So screw it. But you get the idea. Nice, uh, nice flame anodized handles. Purples, orange, blue. Got blues on the outside, purples, and you got your yellows or oranges. Really nice murdered out texture. I really like that feeling. And it looks like it would be sharp, but it's actually really smooth. It doesn't, doesn't hurt or jab into you. Flame anodized inside. It looks like he flame anodized it with the pocket clip on, which is just awesome. That just makes it look cool. Titanium handle, um, frame lock design, obviously. Most custom knives are titanium frame locks. Don't know why, it just, just happens to be that way. Big chunk of a knife, don't have the exact uh, weight or specs on it, but I mean, you see those two slabs of titanium there. If it'll focus. Nope, are we not going to focus? Are we going to be stubborn? Okay, okay, we're going to be stubborn. Really nice chunk of a knife, but one thing that attracted me to this knife, over every other knife, basically every other knife in existence, this. It's locked open. <laughs> it locks open at a 90 degree angle. Oh my god, how awesome is that? That's just awesome. It's like a karambit, but it's it's not really a karambit. But I mean that locks in your hand there, and it's just I mean, that's that's just such a that's just such a unique look. It's like what the hell is this? Reverse grip. I mean it's base. I guess it's a karambit. You can, you can call it karambit. It's a karambit. We'll just we'll go karambit. Really cool blade shape there. My voice sounds like I'm like high off weed or something, but I don't do drugs. I'm just like tired and over caffeinated. <laughs> I got. I'm gonna be more tired later. 
because, you know, work tomorrow and work sucks. I hate work. Okay, my boss is pretty cool. You know, my direct supervisor, but other than that, everyone else sucks. Look at that blade. It's basically a Warncliffe design. It actually, I believe, looking at it now, has a little bit of a upsweep. So it does have a teensy, yep, teensy bit of belly there. Little bit. But still, you're not getting this for cutting performance. You're getting this for the awesome factor. Has a murdered out texture right there. You can see it. It's really smooth. It's like he ground it out and then must have polished it. Because, I mean, it's just... It's really smooth on the hand. It's not... It looks like it'd be sharp, but it's not. And that was something that Jim Skelton even mentioned in his review of his PF1 Flipper. Which I still kind of wish I would have got one of those. But, you know, this guy's, this guy's the next best bet. And plus, just a sinister look of it. I mean, and this thing looks like... And don't flag me for this, but it looks like a murder weapon. It's not, but I mean, it looks like it could be one. I mean, no one's going to buy a $700 knife and go kill someone. I mean, that's just not going to happen. I mean, and for me, like, I don't carry this. I don't advocate, like, violence or anything, you know. I just have to put that out there or else someone's going to be like, Oh, this guy, he's being violent. No, I don't. Come on, really? I endone pacifism whenever, whenever possible. But I mean, this thing just looks cool. It almost looks like an anime weapon or something. Lockup's pretty decent. Pretty, yeah, yeah it's about, mm, probably, was that a little over, probably about 60, 75% lockup. Um, pretty stiff. Not, it's smooth, but it's stiff. It's not like going to go flopping everywhere on you. Let's see, it's kind of hard to get, to get a shot of it locking up because of the angle at this. i got to stab my camera, but let's see here. Let's see if we can get a good shot here. There we go. And then if you, oh, you know what? It locks up like that, but then when I grabbed it, it kind of pushed the lock bar in a little bit. It's fine either way. Um, it is a little awkward to open up just because of the angle. It really can't be flicked. And it, you see, I'm having a little bit of trouble here. Hang on. It's kind of hard to do behind the camera. That detent is pretty stiff. It's doable. It's just, a, it's a little quanky to do. But... The blade, I believe, is probably of the S30 variety steel, S35 VN-ish. I'd assume there's no, he didn't stamp it with anything. I mean, which it's a custom, so I'm kind of surprised he didn't stamp his logo on it somewhere. But I mean, these things are so, they're so iconic almost. Like when you see, when you see a Chris Martin knife or Phantom Steelworks, you kind of know what it is. I haven't looked to see if he's doing anything recently. I mean, after this video, I probably should. I mean, I just bought another knife that it's coming. It's coming soon. A knife that I thought didn't exist anymore, but it actually does. So I'll video on that when it comes. But oh my god, my cameras. I still need to get a better tripod. I'll have a video on that when it comes, but uh this this will have to hold you over in the meantime. I got a bunch of other stuff I gotta I mean review too. I mean last week I told well mentioned in one of my videos I had all these four knives reviewed. So I mean I'm knocking out one of them right now, but I still got all these to talk about, so you know. This guy, this Microtech, this Vector, when we get to that review, it's probably going to be like eight hours long because I got I got some stuff to say about this guy. Not bad at all. Now, I already made a video on my Warren Thomas Baby Bushido, but I never gave it a complete, complete review, I guess you'd call it. I mean, I didn't actually review it. It was just a video of it. And a guy on here actually um, recognized it from the video because he, uh, he, he must have sold it to an eBay seller, or an eBay seller must have bought it, and I bought it from an eBay seller, and it posted a video on it, and he had a video posted on it, and I was like, hey, that kind of looks like the knife, because there was, where is it, somewhere on the knife, I'm trying to remember where it was, I think it might have been one of these scratches here, no, it was on this side, anyway, there was some scratch, like a marking that, you know, I was like, oh, that kind of looks like mine, and then the guy was like, hey, you got my knife, and I'm like, oh, cool, you know, so, can't remember who that guy was. I could probably reference back through the video, but that was kind of cool. And then we got ZT0561. Big knife. Big, big knife. Like a massive tactical blade. I mean, this thing is this thing is a little bit too big. I've, I've carried it like once or twice, but I'm like, yeah, this thing's kind of big. I mean, and I'm one for big knives, too. I mean, I like big knives. But this one, this, this is just kind of big. What do I got on me, actually, right now? Oh, yeah. Benchmade Ruckus 2. That's what I've been rocking. 
I'm just kind of randomly rambling on here. <laughs> the video's over. Go click off. You know how Mr. Mind videos work. I talk for like 20 minutes about needless garbage that needs no talking. Um, let's talk about stuff in the background, okay? Well, first of all, John Homicidal Maniac. Yeah, I could reread this guy. This is this is awesome. This is this is an awesome comic. I mean, I'm not like you know I'm gonna become a serial killer because of this. It's just it's fun. It's satire. Come on, come on. Give me some, give me some slack. Not you don't even give me some slack. Come on, it's fun. Come on, read it. Come on, you you like it. You know, people play violent video games and shoot people all day and they don't become violent. This isn't gonna make you violent if you are, don't have a violent personality. Watching a movie or playing a violent video game is not gonna make you violent. I'm sorry. Got the collector's edition though. <laughs> Still haven't opened this. Oh, you cut my face in there. Look at that. Face reveal. In one of my videos, someone did say that. They were like, oh, face reveal ad, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, dude, you do realize in like every video since like 2010, I've showed my face. I mean, oh, look at I'm just, I keep adjusting the camera. Get used to it. Like every video since, uh, I think since I made my Call of Duty rant like a long ass time ago, um, I've shown my face basically. And, you know, I'm not trying to keep a secret. Yeah, look at that. Camelot. The Shadow Theory. I kind of wanted to do like a top 13 CD uh, CDs of all time. And I got the stack over there. I just haven't got around to it. And plus, trying to review music's a little bit iffy for me. Because, I mean, I, going through like all the track listing and be oh, this one's good. This one sounds good. This one is good. I mean, it's like, I like what I like, but it's kind of hard to describe why I like it. If that makes sense. I mean, this is good. Get, get the Shadow Theory. If you haven't already... Buy it. Camelot's just awesome. Their sound is consistent the whole way through. Like, I prefer the last three albums: uh, Silverthorn, uh, Haven, and The Shadow Theory. And I think actually, I thought one of them was in my top CDs of all times. Oh yeah, Haven, right here. Like I know I put one of them in there. Haven. The nice thing about Camelot is that basically their sound through their albums, at least their last three. Um, it's been very consistent. So it's not repetitive, but it's consistent. It's kind of hard to explain unless you actually listen to them. So, so go listen. Go listen to Silverthorn, Haven, and Shadow Theory. Shadow Theory just came out like a couple days ago. I got a day early because, you know, pre-orders. There's, there's a course. That'll get hammered into your head. I mean, that's, that's going to get hammered into your head when you listen to Burns to Embrace. <laughs> it's awesome. Probably the best song on the, uh, the album. Not that the other one's a bad by me. I just I love that one. Not in Kevlar skin. I picked this up the other day. Blame, blame. Netflix exclusive anime movie. I'd seen a trailer on. This is like I said. This is all Mr. Man videos work. I'm just gonna ramble about stuff. I seen a trailer on. Uh, oh, this is before some video on YouTube, and I typed in the search, and I'm like, okay, after the video, I'm gonna search for it. Well, idiot me, closed the video out. And it closed the webpage out. And I was like, dang it, what was the name of that anime? I thought it was like Blaze or something. So I kept searching, 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 searching. I'm like, dear old, I can't find it. So finally I typed in like, it was something like anime robots versus humans. And then I, on Google Images. And I scrolled down until I found like a screenshot from the trailer. And I clicked on that screenshot and I saw, okay, it was from Blame. So then I looked it up. I should have just like searched for Netflix exclusive anime because it said like it was from Netflix. But this is kind of, it's it's a good, I, I like the animation style. Ooh, look at that shiny. That's 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 not going to work. Uh, I wonder actually if I take the light down if this will, yeah, maybe a little bit. Ooh, kind of looks 3D. Ooh, that's kind of cool. Ooh. They're not even embossed on there. That's actually kind of a cool effect. Ooh. Um, let's kick it back up. Um, it's, uh, 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 I can't think. I can't think. My brain just died. Oh, I like the animation. The premise of it's pretty interesting, but I felt like it was just a tad hair short of being really good. Like, there were some moments where I'm like, it's going to get really good here. It's going to get good. And then it didn't. So, you know, it, it was just short of greatness. It's not a bad watch, though. It's not too long. Or it's like 90 minutes, I think. Hour and a half. I believe so. No, no, it's 100 minutes. 100 minutes? 100? Where, where's, where's it? Main feature. Approximately fuzzy. Fuzzy thumbnails. Trying to focus on my thumbnail probably. It's approximately 106 minutes. So that ain't bad. You know, worth a, worth a watch. Kind of interesting premise. If you like the whole um, 
how did I put it on Facebook? Uh, it was like the whole sci-fi primitive setting. I'm kind of like Horizon Zero Dawn where humanity is so far in, like just so far in the future that we forget how we got there basically. That's kind of what this is based off of where there's all this technology, there's robots, but humanity doesn't remember how it got there. <clears throat> That's kind of an awesome setting. Um, some stuff's been doing that recently, which is awesome. You want to know else is awesome setting? That's right, son. Far Cry 5. I've been playing the hell out of this. This is a good game. This is an awesome game. This is probably one of the best games. There's my code I already used. So you can't get the purple pack. This is probably one of the most awesome games I've actually ever played. I mean, like, ever. Like, as far as open world games go, I mean, this is high. And this is really high up there. I mean, like, really high. Other than, like, let's see, the only other open world games I really like, Metal Gear Solid 5 is good. Horizon Zero Dawn is awesome. Um, well, actually, Metal Gear Solid 5 is actually awesome. Sorry, we're, we're going to put it in the awesome category. Metal Gear Solid 5, Horizon Zero Dawn, Watch Dogs. Um, what are open world games that I play that were just, like, totally the bee's knees? Um, I don't know, the Transformers for the D Nintendo DS, but that was a long time ago. That was kind of, that was, that was, that was, that was, that was in my past, but yeah. So if you stuck around to the end of this video, you're actually a Mr. Land fan. If you just watch for the knife, well, that's cool. You know, you're not listening to this part, so <laughs> it doesn't apply to you anyway. But yeah, so thanks for tuning in. I will see you in my next review on the flip side of something. I, I, I really don't know. I, I never know how to end. I never know how to end videos. So we'll just end up. Hang on. I'm gonna get in frame. Oh, dang it. Okay. There we go. Talk to you later.